2 Corinthians chapter 9. Thank God for grace. But like I said, you've got things to do. God gives you the seed, but it's your responsibility to plant the seed. And each of us is the Word of God. If you're believing God for a miracle, if you're believing God for healing, do you have any seed planted in you? Have you took time to plant some seed? Have you took time to get some scripture? If you're believing God for an increase in your finances, have you planted any seed? <laughs> that breakthrough might not come this season. It may not come next season, but it's coming. That field is going to be full if you're staying faithful to plant. Anybody say, well, you know, I only got a couple of dollars. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all God wants. He wants your all. <laughs> now, we got, I'm not saying the empty out what it is. You got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. There's, a biblical, there's biblical principles, and we're not going to get into all of this more. But what I'm saying is, though your seed may seem insignificant, just as Jesus said, that seed which may seem so insignificant has the potential, if you plant it and believe in faith, and to tend to that seed, it will become a great tree. It will become a great bush. It will become so large that it will not only satisfy you, but it will satisfy others. You know, those big trees, those trees, you know, you take an acorn, it has the ability to turn into that big oak tree. Well, it don't only provide shade for me, but it would provide enough shade for everyone in here. But it started off as an acorn. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, But this I say, He who sows sparingly, what? He'll also reap sparingly. That's a biblical law. That's a principle. Who in here is no good at math? Is anybody in here no good at math? Just admit it that they're not very good at math. Anybody? Sherry, you're not very good at math? I'm going to use an example. Thank you for volunteering this morning. <laughs> Sherry, if you would stand up for me. Just stand up. If you let everybody give Sherry a hand for that beautiful. Isn't that? <laughs> now, Sherry, you admitted that math's not your strong suit. What's two plus two? What's three plus three? What's five plus five? Thank you. You know, Sherry is a man not very good at math, but yet, still yet, she knows some basics. And two plus two is four, whether or not you agree with it or not. Whether or not you can even not, whether if you, if you can't even add two plus two, it still doesn't change the fact that two plus two is four. It doesn't change that truth whatsoever. You can agree with it, or you can argue with it all. The law of math says 2 plus 2 is 4. And 2 plus 2 always equals 4. There's laws and principles in God's Word, whether or not you believe it or not, whether or not you're using it in your life. And it's just that simple. It's just simple addition. It's saying, I give and God increases. I give little, I give little in return. I give much, I give a lot in returns. It's simple addition. But he says, what does I say? He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you, let each one, so let each one, amen, give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves what? A cheerful giver. You see, where your money is, that's where your treasure is. Where your heart is also dictates where your faith is. Where your faith is. You see, God wants us to be in place, our heart. He's saying, I require 100%, but I don't require even financially. What he's saying is, I want you at any time, I want your heart to be a place. If I tell you to give $5, you're going to give $5. If I lay it upon your heart to give $5,000, you're going to give $5,000. If I lay it upon your heart to give $50,000, you're going to give $50,000. He says he wants us to be 100% committed in our heart towards him. And that's, that's all I'm saying. And not only of our own life, but of our finances. He is Lord of all or not of all. If you can't trust God in the little or the least, which is money, 
how you going to, how you, how, how's God going to hold you uh, accountable and responsible for that which is the much, which is the things of the Spirit? He wants your 100%. I'm not saying He's going to require you to wipe out your bank. He's not, I'm not saying that. But He wants your heart to be in a place to where you recognize that you depend upon Him for your financial gain. Your trust is not in riches of this world, but your trust is in the God, the creator of this world and universe. But let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, not or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. He wants your heart to be in the right place. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you, it says that you, always having all sufficiency in all things. Everybody say all things. all things. Amen. That's God's will for our life, to have sufficiency in all things. He just doesn't want you strong spiritually, but He wants you strong mentally. He wants you strong physically. He wants your health to flourish. It's His will is your health to flourish. And He wants you to be strong financially as well, so that you have all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. As written, he is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Once again, the seed is word. The seed is also financial things. He provides that seed to you. You are where you're at because of God's grace. Once again, God's unmerited favor. Thank God you are where you are. He's provided you with that. Amen? Amen. I believe that. Now may he who supplies that seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply. Everybody say supply and multiply. Thank you. The seed you have sown. Now may the God supply, this is again, may God supply and multiply the seed you have sown. You have sown. You have sown. Thank God for grace. God gives you the grace and ability and provides a way for you to sow seed. He provides the seed. But then you have to sow the seed. And increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are rich in everything for all liberty which causes thanksgiving through us to God. You gotta sow seed. You got your part to play in this increase. You gotta do your part. Amen. And it's when somebody anytime in ministry talk, they say, Well, they're just trying to get more money, they're just trying to get this out of it. No, I'm trying to get money to you. I'm trying to get God's blessings to increase in your life. I'm trying to get you to where you are increased and blessed in everything, just as the Word says. But God has put certain principles in place, and if we don't do our part, even though the potential, just like that mustard seed, has to be a thousand or even a million times bigger than itself, if it's never sown, it's going to remain a seed. If you never take that little bit that you have now and begin to sow it, then believe God for an increase in your life, it's not going to increase. Instead, He says, I'm going to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. You're not. If you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. But that farmer takes that packet of seed and plants it. Hallelujah. And he's faithful to in believing God. But he's also faithful to put to work what has been given to him. And eventually, that, that those few packets of seeds becomes a field of corn. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season. Amen. Everybody say due season. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. I mean, if we stay faithful, if we do what God tells us to do, He promises us a harvest. He promises us that we're going to reap in due season. It may not be this season of your life, but God says be faithful to sow, be faithful to go, Hallelujah. be faithful to increase your learning and to know the Word, and you will grow. Amen. Your harvest is yours. Thank God for the harvest 
but be faithful to sow seed now. Miles Monroe puts it like this, you are the sum total of the choices and decisions that you make every day. If you're wanting to increase in your life, you know how you're going to get an increase in your life in anything. I'm talking anything. Anything. Whether it be peace, love, all, you, all, all the fruits of the Spirit. It's there. But how do, you see, how do you get that increase? By getting God's Word on it and putting it to use and practicing it. How do you get an increase in health in your life? By getting God's Word, His seed, and put it to use in your life. How does your gifts and callings develop? How do they how do they mature? By putting them to use. How do you grow financially? By putting it to use. You gotta plant you gotta plant some seed. Y'all with me? Y'all know. Where's with me? Thank you, Brent. So many people are expecting an increase in their life and they're not doing anything about it. They're not planting nothing. They're just saying, well, thank God. I'm saved, and now I don't have to do anything. I can just live however I want to live, do what I want to do. I'm blessed. Yeah, you're right. You are blessed. As the old saying goes, Brother Hagin, you say, bless their darling hearts and stupid heads. That's what it is. Bless their darling hearts and stupid heads. They ain't got enough sense. They ain't got enough biblical truth. They ain't got enough word in them to know better. And I'm telling you, it's not all works. I'm not saying that. It's by grace that we're saved. But grace is never an excuse. Grace was never meant to be light on sin, or grace is never an excuse for us to live however we want. Grace was, is a springboard for us into good works. Grace gives us the freedom to produce and have in our life good works. Works. None are condemnation of the law, but the newness of life and the freedom in the direction of the Holy Spirit. I Meaning you can live your life any way that God's Word leads you and that the Holy Spirit leads you. You're not under bondage to anything, but hallelujah, the law of love. The law of love. Amen. 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 There we go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Well, let's take up our tithes now. We got, we got our please. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God He is a God of increase. He is not a God of decrease. You see, what He places inside of you, He intends wholeheartedly. His plan and purpose for your life is a return. The Bible says some 30, some 60, some 100. You see, you're not responsible. You, you can't always dictate. Your plan that you have for your life may not be what God has in store for you. God wants you to believe big. He wants you to think big. And He wants you to act big. Faith without works is dead. Meaning, if you're believing God for something, if you're believing God for a breakthrough or a miracle in your life, you got to put your faith to work. you got to put your faith to work. you got to believe that He is God who He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You've got to seek Him. You've got to ask for His direction. And then when He gives you direction on how to get out of that mess you have made on your life, you have got to be obedient to put to work what the Master gives you. You've got to be faithful with what He tells you to do. Don't sit idly. Don't sit as the mockers and the scoffers, the fools of this world, who sit back and look at others as they go. And they just look and then they see them and they make fun of them saying, you till and you tool and you labor and you sow. And then they they don't see anything happen in their life. But those same fools who said mock you one day, they behold what it is that the Master has given the increase in your life. Because then they begin to sing and they say, well, <laughs> I guess we were the fool. I guess we were the fool. Sometimes we just need to admit in our life that we're the fool. God, I have been a fool in this area of my life. I have acted foolishly. I have not 
hearken to what you have called me to do, Father. I repent. I've been the fool. But you see, simply acknowledging how it is the first step to recovery. But then, put to use what the Master has given you. Those gifts that are inside of you that you've buried away because you thought, well, I've been the fool. Those things upon your heart God has called you to do and, and uh, things God has spoken specifically in your life. And you've not done it because well, you've just been a fool. Repent. <laughs> Repent. But amen. Go in grace. Go in God's love. Knowing who the sun sets free is free me. The life that's in the past is in the past. But how do you take it? Stir up, through, stir up in yourself. And the direction God gives you is for your benefit. It may require some sacrifice on your part. It will require faith on your part. But be faithful, for God is always faithful. Do what He tells you to do, whether it makes sense to the mind or not. God doesn't deal with the mind. God is a spirit. God will talk to you through your spirit. And if He's telling you to do something, do it in faith. Though that seed may seem small, though the field may seem big, though there may be those that you say that it can't be done, it can and it will be done. If you will plant the seed, you shall reap a harvest. So amen in your life. Plant. Ask God what it is, where you need to go and what you need to do. And when He tells you, do it whether it makes sense to your mind or not. Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it because God has told you to do it because you have purpose in your heart. Because it is within your heart. You have determined with your heart. Do it not only obediently, but do it willing. And the God who is more than enough will increase, multiply, and return unto you the harvest of the seed that you have sown. Amen. Amen. Let's give. Well, God has a purpose in my heart. Hallelujah. Um, some thanks. And myself personally, uh, I'm just testifying on myself. I wouldn't ask nobody to do anything that I wouldn't do. But God laid it on me in my heart, and I got with Lisa, and I, we, you know, praying about some things. And man, we're planting seed. Amen. I don't want to get too much detail about some things, but God spoke into my heart, and. One thing is on seed time and harvest, just seeking God in a few things. But just even what came out Tuesday night, this is a field for God's use. This is a field for God's work. And it's bigger than what we have. I look around, I see the church is not full this morning. But still yet, seed time and harvest. I believe in God for a harvest. A harvest of souls, amen. A harvest of souls. I believe in it's, it's much more than just financial. Amen. But you see, we got to be faithful with the little. Until we're faithful in the little, don't expect God to hold you accountable over the much. And I'm talking not only ministry, but also financially as well. So God said, if you believe in free increase, so give more. Amen. So amen. I, I, I'm doing something. You know, me and Lisa, we're in agreement on this. I'm going to ask you. I'm just telling you what God spoke to me. God will speak to you on your heart. This is what God purposed for me and my heart and what we're doing. On a percentage basis, we're going to start giving more than what we've ever gave. Now, I say on a percentage basis. I'm not saying on a monetary basis. I've made more than what I'm currently making, just being honest with you. But on a percentage basis, we're going to start giving more. And tell you right, Lisa. Amen. And we're in agreement. And that's what God says. I said, I came to Lisa and I said, God spoke some things in my heart and to show me some things on increase. I could do it on my own, but God told me not to do it. It's not just for me to stand in some faith. This is this is me and you. So we took some time. I got about I took one page. I had about well five pages of scriptures. But I said, least just for me and you. I'm gonna I did my best in this is one and still had to break up my Bible on a few things. I said, I'm not doing this because brother so and so can do it. We're not doing this because somebody else is doing it. I'm doing it because we're going to do this because the Word says to do it. Because we're believing. If we're believing for an increase, then we have got to put our faith to work. <laughs> well, so this is me, Lisa. I'm just sharing this with you. So I mean, on a, on a percentage basis, I'm giving
given more than what I've ever gained. Hallelujah. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this because you will see my life. You will see my least life. We have him least. Hallelujah. We, we don't like it. Even Lisa says, you know, is this, is this wrong for us to do this? Is this stingy? I said, no, this is not stingy for us. This is just the abundant life. This is just not walking in partiality of God's blessings. This is, we, I want to walk in all of God's blessings. It may seem stingy to you, but no, I just want what God wants for me. That's not stingy. For me to enjoy what God wants me to enjoy is not being stingy. That's just enjoying life. That's enjoying the abundant life. So he's, like I said, but seek God out. Amen. If you want an increase, don't look at your decrease. Put that which is little to work. Put it to work. And then put it, how they do it, in faith. But I'm telling you this, the reason I tell you, because I'm very private about things, about, about these things, but I'm not doing it to brag either. But you will see the increase. Though the field may look empty now, you will see the results. And it's in God's timing. It's in due season. But hallelujah. We're planning, believing God for increase, not only in our life, not only in our personal life, but in the ministry as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There I be say amen. Well, if you got your seat, I want you to get out. Let's take a burp. Tithes and offerings. Amen. Thank God for increase. You see, that is faith. The substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm no longer than I intended, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Willie Kim, you guys take up the offer today. All right. Say it with me. I thank you, Father, that you have blessed me. So I give. I give because I love you. Let's be obedient to your word. I give willingly. <laughs> I give because I want to fulfill the Great Commission in this world. My desire is that the good news of the gospel of Christ be preached in the entire world. And I give faith. And I thank you, Father, for the return of my financial seed, your son, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody shout out increase. Increase, increase, increase. Amen. Not only in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. How do we increase in your life? I believe that increase. Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. But you see, it is according to the power that's at work within us. The work that's in each and every one of us. I know we're out in the middle of nowhere here. <laughs> I, I can see things, but amen. I choose not to look at things to the sight of the mind. But I look through things and I see things through the vision, hallelujah, of faith. And I believe that God is a God of more than enough. He is a God of increase. And hallelujah, He's not going to only bring increase to my life, but if you're obedient to the word which He speaks to your heart, it'll increase your life. Regardless of the economical situation of the country, of your nation, of the county, no matter where you came out of, how it, no matter what your background is, faith moves God. Smith Lewis said there's something about faith that will cause him to pass over a thousand, a million people just to get to that one person, how it, and anoint him, how it, how it. Our God is a God of faith. Amen.
is just for me It looks like a hurricane at the tree Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and we realize just how beautiful you are now great your affections are for me sing it if you know it though how he loves us oh though how he loves us
you let's please be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Michelle, stay stand up for a second. When you was uh, when they was ministering the song, Hallelujah. Did you hug everybody? Did you run hug people? Oh, I didn't see you, but you hugged me. Spirit of the Lord, hey, word came up in my spirit saying to you, said you have sown into the lives of others love, joy, peace, and comfort. And the Spirit, Hallelujah, God is saying to you that He's going to increase in your life. And the gift of faith, I'm not talking about ordinary faith. I'm talking about the gift of faith is going to rise up within you. And you're going to believe in a greater measure than what you have in times past. And peace and joy and love is going to be multiplied and sown back unto you. Does that bear witness to your spirit? Receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is good, isn't he? Let's all stand if you would help me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Father, for eyes to see, ears to hear, and Father, boldness and a mouth to speak. Amen. Father, we thank you for increase in the lives of each and every one here. Father, we thank you for stirring us up. Thank you, Father, that we're stirring ourselves up. And Father, as we spoke on increase, thoughts and ideas came into the hearts of some. Things that they had been believing for for a long time. Father, you begin to stir them up with that things and increase. And Father, when you show us where to go, we thank you that we also shall know the way. And so we thank you in these lives of these people that are here, Father. And things that's been stirred up in their lives. We declare increase. And Father, we believe that this morning is a, is, is a time for increase for their lives. And those things which they see shall come to pass. You have stirred us up this morning. Thank you, Father. And we, once again, thank you for a clear vision, a large vision in the next step. And I thank you, Father, that, that Father, we are a body of leaders. That, Father, we are kings, queens, priests, and priestesses <laughs> uh, to you. Father, you are the king of kings and lord of lords. And, Father, we are those kings that you are king over. We are those queens, hallelujah. Father, we do not glory in ourselves. Father, we do not boast in our own works. But, Father, we're boasting in you, the giver of strength. The giver of gifts. You are the hope in which, Father, we thank you that you have given us and inspired us to give to others. And, Father, your word says, give, and it shall be given unto us. And so, Father, we choose this day to give and to sow in a greater measure into the lives of others. We purpose in our hearts, and we thank you for showing us how to increase into the lives of others. And we thank you as we give, Father, you're giving back uh, to us. And Father, we thank you that the blessings which you are, are sowing unto us, giving us, are so great that there will not be enough room to receive it. I thank you, Father, that there's leaders here. They are. Each one here, Father. We are not a church of simply disciples. We are a church of leaders. And Father, we bring up other disciples. And Father, we train up other leaders here, Father. Each of us, leaders, and we thank you that we are leading. We are examples. Father, examples. Amen. Yes, examples. A city on a hill, a light which cannot be hid. Hallelujah. We thank you for that confirmation. We thank you for confirmations in that. The light, the glory, the increase. Father, in each and every one here. And Father, we ask that you send labors. Father, those that are supposed to be here. There will be those... Hallelujah. That may not understand. But we thank you for those who do. And those who will. And those who will. Send labors. Quicken and speak to hearts. Those that Father shared in this vision. Who are supposed to be part of this vision. Thank you for stirring them up. Awaken them so that they can see that there is much to be done. And that Father you're not done with us. Not only here Father. But everywhere. Father oneness. Oneness, unity spring forth, Father. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Amen. Ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. Thank you, Father, for showing us what we see not, teaching us what we know not, and preparing us for what you have prepared for us. Well, I'll get through covenant one day, maybe, Lord willing. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, Honor Denver will be with us next week. And then I just make some plans the week after that. Lord willing, we'll get we'll talk some, preach some on the new covenant, and then we'll do communion. How's that sound? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody say increase. Increase. Believe it. Believe it in your life. God is, is going to begin showing you things. I believe that. He has this morning even some things. I was praying. I was praying out of my heart. Hallelujah. God showed you increase. God showed you some areas in your life that need to increase. And God has showed you some things in your life that you know you need to be doing. It's not going to happen until you start taking the step of faith. Until you learn to not walk in the past, but walk in the present. And you start putting to work that which the Master has held you accountable for. Put it to use. Don't hide it in the ground. Put it to use. Put it to use. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, he is good. Anything else? Does anybody need prayer? Hallelujah. Does anybody want us to get agreement with you this morning? All right. Well, Lord is good and His mercies endure forever. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate each and every one. Love each and every one of you. Stir yourself up. And so, so, amen.